street. That's what we're doing. <laughs> what do you know about Delilah? I've only heard a little bit about her that she sounded pretty sexy. I don't really know the story, but uh, what I remember from it, she's a whore. <laughs> uh, that she hung out with uh, a guy named Samson. Okay. Yeah, the long hair. He had long hair. Yeah, yeah and he was strong. Like you. So you, you fall in love with Delilah. You know what happens when you fall in love with a woman? And then in the night, she cut his hair, and then he was without power. She sold him out. She did, in the end. Um, and women, what she did. <laughs> Samson and Delilah, the immortal story of... The Samson was a Jew, Delilah a Philistine, probably the most famous Philistine. They were lovers, but the Bible says their tribes were great enemies. Today, calling someone a Philistine is an insult. You're saying they lack culture. But why do we peg the Philistines this way? In the last few years, dramatic discoveries have been made. Philistine cities excavated right where the Bible says they should be. And what they've dug up raises many questions. So, this is what we want to know. Who were the real Philistines? Why were they such great villains? And how did they disappear? This is one of the finds forcing us to reconsider who the Philistines were. This is ancient Ashkelon. It's a port city, and it's a port city mentioned in the Bible. Time of the Philistines. I mean, we're talking 600 to 1200 before the Common Era. You know, 3200 years ago. That's when the stories of Samson are taking place, David and Goliath. This weird ancient site. And when the Philistines got here from summer, people don't want to realize they're Greek. And when they came here, the sea is right over there, they, they came here. Look at this. This is a huge, huge city. And the amazing thing is it's just where the Bible said it would be. Look at this. this is, it, it's, the gate is still there. I mean, an actual gate, probably the oldest excavated gate in the world. Possibly Samson and Delilah walked through it. They would have walked through this gate. Before Samson and Delilah or any other Philistine walked through the gate, the evidence suggests that they came from somewhere else. The Bible says the Philistines first show up around 1200 BC. But where were they before that? Where did the Philistines come from? Professor Carl Ehrlich is an expert on biblical archaeology from York University. His digs include Gat, hometown of the giant at the wrong end of David's sling, the Philistine Goliath. The Philistine people, the people of Delilah, the people of Goliath. In the general public, people think that these are Bible people, so they must be Semites. But in a scholarly community, whenever I've heard them referred to, it's always Aegean people, people from the area of modern-day Greece. Which is it? Are these guys Greeks or Jews? Are they eating souvlaki or falafel? <laughs> Definitely eating souvlaki. We've discovered that uh, when a site becomes Philistine, there's a change in diet from one in which sheep and goats provide the major source of meat to one uh, in which pork and beef are much more common. Than Philistines are eating Philistines pork. Philistines are eating pork, yes. Uh, which, again, seems not to be indigenous to that region. So they, they show up from the Aegean area, maybe Cyprus, Probably, maybe, maybe Crete. Some, right, yeah. The speculation is that the Philistines are one of a number of roving bands of sea peoples who plied the eastern Mediterranean world. 3,000 years ago, the sea people appeared. Delilah's great-great-great-great-great-grandparents. But what drove these roaming Greeks into the sea? Dr. Trudy Dotan excavated the cities that these sea people, the Philistines, inhabited on the coast of Israel. I met her in Ashdod, a modern town named after the 3,000-year-old Philistine village that once stood here. Now, something happened, a catastrophe, and there are many explanations for that. What was it? We see it's uh, in Greece, uh, the cities like Mycenae, like Tyrians, were destroyed. The famous cities with the uh, wonderful... Uh, so 1200 around, around BC, 1200 BC e yes. something happens. happens massive Which, massively, destruction. Yes. Flourishing civilization, and then something dramatic happens dramatic. to destroy, and then a dark age. Exactly. 
Which catastrophe forced the sea people from Greece south to Egypt and the coast of what is now Israel? Earthquake? Plague? Invasion? No one knows for sure. But there's one piece of evidence on the Philistines from the days of catastrophe. When they made it to the shores of Egypt, there were battles. And this is the Egyptian mural giving us our first snapshot of Delilah's family tree. These are blown up uh, depictions made out of the only images of Philistine warriors that we have. And they come from Egypt from the time of Ramses II, uh, 1200 before the Common Era, some 3200 years ago. And you could see they're wearing feathered headgear of some sort. They're wearing kilts and uh, they have fringes at the corner of their kilts, which probably signified some kind of religious tassels, some kind of holy knots, if you will. This is how the Egyptians saw the Philistines. It's not much to go on. Most of what we know about Delilah's clan comes from the Bible. Just how sophisticated was the Israelite culture that would later brand the Philistines as the great boors of history? Dr. Aaron Mayer excavates Philistine sites, including town sites like this one in Tel Aviv. He's helping bring the Philistines into focus. Were the Israelites hillbillies compared to the Philistines? Um, yes, they were. Really? The Israelites were a, a bunch of disheveled, uh, barely cultured um, people living in the hills, and the Philistines came with a, uh, with a much more sophisticated uh, culture. We're comparing their, their cities uh, compared to the Israelite uh, hamlets. We're comparing their pottery, which is much better made. We're comparing their uh, metallurgy, which is better. We're comparing their temples. We're comparing evidence of uh, political organization, evidence of military capabilities, uh, and, you, and, and the list goes on and on. Yeah. Most of what we know about Philistine material culture comes from pottery and small religious figurines. They show Greek influences, Egyptian influences, proving just how cosmopolitan the Philistines were compared to the Israelites. We don't know many things, but what they used for everyday life is really on a very, very high level. And only the repertoire of the decorations is amazing. I mean, maybe they were great in kitchen pottery, but maybe they weren't such nice people. Uh, not necessarily the rich and uh, those with high culture, the nice people, you know. But they what were kind power. Of they were definitely, they had power. They had a monopoly on iron. And the Israelites had to come down to Philistia to sharpen their iron, iron tools. tools. That was really a monopoly, which of course gave them a lot of power. And then they had the chariots, and then they had the military build up. So the Philistines had the Israelites by the nuts and bolts. And Delilah had Samson by the, well... Um, the Samson and Delilah story is a very sexy story. He's mm -hmm. really like turned on by Delilah, yeah, yeah, let's yeah. face it. And uh, I, think, I think you're turned on by Delilah. I, I think Delilah, she sounds sexy. I read the Bible, I'm excited, you know this. Uh, okay, okay, yeah. Now, <laughs> were the Israelites and the Philistines really so far apart? Enemies are often intimates. Cross-fertilization, not just between Samson and Delilah, took place. Even the mighty Samson seems more Greek than Jewish. The Samson cycle is just so unlike anything else we have in the Hebrew Bible. We've got a hero, a, a judge of Israel, who never interacts with Israelites. He's always hanging around and, and messing around with Philistine women. Uh, and uh, partying and, and breaking all his vows. And it's only in his death that he finally acknowledges and mentions God and becomes this big Israelite hero. But he's always acting on his own rather than acting with a tribe or with anyone else. So there's that, that Samson really is a Hercules type of figure. And there's some people who've uh, argued that, well, maybe Samson comes from Greek mythology, that Samson really is a transplantation of the Greek Heracles into an Israelite context. Samson, the Herculean Jew. The Bible says he toppled the Philistine temple with his bare hands. Sounds like a miracle. But what does the archaeology say? Okay, what I want to know, you find, you, there's, a, there's a Philistine temple right here, correct? Mm -hmm. And it's got pillars just like in the Samson mm -hmm. story. Yes. Correct? Yes. And in the Samson story, it says that Samson was a guy like me, you know, strong yeah. guy, you know, works out a lot, mm -hmm. 
and then he pushes these pillars, and kabloom, the whole temple goes down, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. We've got the architecture, we've got the site, we've got the archaeology. Is it fe feasible, plausible? Yeah, absolutely. You're kidding. Well, all it says is that story is not negated by the uh, the archaeological remains. To say that that proves the story, I mean, if that's no, what, no, if, that's mean, what you you're, if that's what you're, no, I'm not into that. I'm just saying. Here's a beautiful story. Yeah. This guy is hot for this girl. He gets into trouble. They take out his eyes. They tie him to the pillars, two pillars. He prays to God, pushes the pillars, kills his enemies. Here you have a temple from that time, Philistine, and what's in the middle of it? Two pillars. Mm -hmm. So it says, it's, hey, this that, is not just, this This fits. This, this fits in very nicely with, the, with what we know about the Philistines' uh, story. And, I and you guys always try to avoid that because you're, you're afraid you're going to be called non-academic and a religious no, fanatic. No. Well, first of all, I, I, I'm calling that all the time, but that's, that doesn't bother me. So pushing over the temple was possible. Is it also possible that the Israelites and Philistines weren't really so far apart after all?